video will introduce you to wide-legged forward fold with moving arms. To begin, start in mountain posture releasing the arms down. Take a wide stance with the feet separating them a good distance and turning the toes inward. Now with a big breath, take your arms up and reach up towards the sky. And as you exhale, take the arms back down to the hips, fingers pointing inward. Now one more breath in, this one's gonna stretch the throat area, invigorating the thyroid. And you start folding down, leading with the heart, keep the chin up, continue to stretch through the throat area and drop your hands when you're about halfway down releasing the hands flat onto the ground. Now, if this is not available to you, you can also bend the knees and use a block or a book that you have around the house underneath the hands. Okay. The next few movements you can do as often as you'd like or as many repetitions as you'd like. We'll start with the left. As you inhale, reach the left arm either halfway up or all the way up towards the ceiling. We're gonna pause here, although you might wanna move with your breath and turn the head once again, stretching through the throat area and invigorating the blood flow in that area. As you exhale, the arm floats back down and you continue to move with the other arm, inhaling up and exhaling back down. And again, you may continue as many repetitions as you'd like. When you're ready to finish, squeeze the abs, bend your knees just a tiny bit and take the hands back to the hips a nice big inhale, leading up with the heart, coming back into mountain posture. Heel toe the feet together. Week five means we are talking about the fifth chakra or the throat chakra. And as you can see, we have a little bit of a different setup up here. I have the uh, scarf covering up my TV and my electronics because who wants to look at that? And what we're doing today involves standing, so I needed to just modify the setup a little bit. Uh, so the lighting is a little weird, but you know what? We're going to roll with it. Uh, so fifth chakra, one of the best ways that you can balance this chakra is chanting. Find a mantra that you love, chant it every day. That is going to help you balance and strengthen your throat chakra, especially if you're having communication issues. Also associated with this chakra, the thyroid and the parathyroid gland. And I'm again referencing a medical meditation from this book, Meditation as Medicine. There are a few options in here, and this time we're seeing some kriyas, so some more physical movement uh, as part of some ways to balance and strengthen the fifth chakra. Uh, this particular meditation is for the thyroid gland, and in the comments of this meditation, it does say that if your thyroid gland is out of balance, it can contribute to aging prematurely and skin conditions. So this particular meditation helps uh, improve your skin, your complexion, and it's also called the Miracle Bend because it um, prevents early menopause and also improves your emotional and mental balance as well. And what's beautiful about it, two simple moves that you can practice in two to four minutes a day. Uh, so it's recommended to do each one for one to two minutes. We'll practice them for two minutes each and that's all so what this will look like is standing up with your arms raised up above your head arms hugging the ears and bending back about 20 degrees eyes are closed and focused on your third eye if you have some issues balancing with your eyes closed you can just fix them on a point in the ceiling and then long deep breathing there for two minutes today and then when that time is up, I will let you know and you'll slowly move forward, keeping those, uh, those arms hugged to your ears and come down, bending forward uh, as deeply as you can. And, but you want to make sure that it's comfortable. You don't want to overstretch. And in this posture, you will inhale, suspend the breath, and pump the navel as many times as you can. When you can't hold the breath any longer, Exhale, and then with the breath held out, continue to pump the navel as many times as you can. So inhale, hold, pump. Exhale, hold, pump. There's no mantra. Eyes are going to be closed and rolled up to your third eye. So let's begin with tuning in. 
And then I'm going to move back. I need to just move my microphone and my timer with me, and we'll begin. All right? Palms together, eyes closed, rolled up to your third eye. Inhale deeply. Exhale. Inhale to tune in. Om Namo Guru Dev Namo Om Namo Guru Dev Namo I'm just going to set my timer, and plant those feet shoulder width apart or hips width apart or a little bit further. Give yourself a nice firm support, nice stable support. Inhale the arms up, and long deep breathing. Try to keep those arms close to your ears, eyes are closed, focus on your third eye or look at a point on the ceiling. Really expand that belly as you inhale. And draw the navel back toward your spine as you exhale. Inhale deeply and hold. Exhale and slowly, very slowly, keep those arms close to your ears. Move down and begin the next breath cycle. Inhale, hold, pump the navel. When you can't hold the breath any longer, stop pumping and exhale and continue to pump with the nape or with the inhale, suspend the breath and pump the navel as many times as you can. Then exhale, hold the breath out and continue to pump the navel. Keep those arms close to the ears, hugged into the ears.
deeply. Exhale. And roll that spine up. Thank you for joining me for this week's urban practice. In Hale Park today, and I'm here with my constant companion, the crow. <laughs> they are my companion here in Victoria, BC. Today we have a question that comes via email from Suzanne from Sweden, and she says, do you know if there are any yoga practices for hypothyroid? Much love, Suzanne from Sweden. So just for everybody who's watching out there, hypothyroidism refers to a condition where the thyroid is producing hormones below its normal level. Low levels of hormone production from the thyroid can cause a uh, result in fatigue, depression, constipation, weight gain, puffy face, hair loss, irregular menstrual cycles, facial hair growth, and swelling in your throat. Your thyroid is located at the bottom of your neck, just below your Adam's apple. And just so you know, also we would go into detail on balancing your thyroid in the perimenopause class, yoga class on the membership site. And today I'm going to show you two yoga poses that stimulate an underactive thyroid by putting pressure on the thyroid gland. And before we won't go any further, I just wanna make sure that if you have if you suspect you have any thyroid issues, you really need to check with your medical doctor or a Chinese medicine doctor or a naturopathic doctor because I am a PhD in communications and cultural studies and not a medical doctor. So this doesn't constitute any sort of medical advice. I just stay within the parameters of my practice, which is to show you any yoga practices that might help if you've had a medical advice from your medical doctor. So um, I will show you shoulder stand and fish pose which are supposed to be good for your thyroid. Um, so we're outside today. Normally I'd like to start shoulder stand with your legs up the wall and use the wall. But you can also come into shoulder stand by rolling up into it and then using your hands to uh, walk up your back. So if you're new to shoulder stand, I would really recommend that you look at our beginners classes. We have a whole beginners class on inversions and in that class we teach you how to come into shoulder stand. So that's what I would recommend if you are new to shoulder stand. And then the other one is fish pose. So you lie on your back and tuck your hands underneath you and press into your elbows, lift your chest and rest on the top of your head and that's also great for thyroid. And if you want a more detailed description on how to come into fish pose, you could go on Google and type melissawest.com colon fish pose and it'll come up all the classes where fish pose is in it in my free namaste yoga classes. Another uh, practice that is really great for the thyroid, we're going to do alternate nostril breathing for your pituitary gland because the thyroid is regulated by another gland that is located in the brain, the pituitary. So um, the way that works is you press your, you extend your first two fingers, you rest it on your third eye, you close your right nostril, you breathe in through your left nostril. Close your left nostril, breathe out through your right nostril. Breathe in right. Close right, breathe out left. Breathe in left. Close left, breathe out right. Breathe in right. Close right, breathe out left. And continue that practice for three to 10 minutes, starting and ending on your left nostril. I would recommend Namaste Yoga 199 for the health of all of your glands. And I would also highly recommend that you check out our membership site for our menopause series. And I'll put in the link, show notes links for more on becoming 
a member. The perimenopause and menopause classes have herbal remedies and lots of yoga postures and herbal remedies to help you with thyroid issues as well. So I would love to know from you now what has helped you balance your thyroid glands. Leave your comments below. Thanks for a great question, Suzanne. Melissa would love to hear your questions and thoughts. Please leave your comments below the video. Thank you for your reviews on iTunes and YouTube. Your reviews help us to share yoga and a yoga